Let us understand the concept of required reinvestment income through a example. Say you have a 12% 10-year rupees 100 par bond priced at rupees 89.41. What is the required reinvestment income over the life of the bond? Now, if you do your calculations, let's say that this is a semi-annual bond. If you plug in your numbers, you will notice that the yield to maturity is 14%. So, with yield to maturity of 14% and you are making an investment of 89.41, how much are you expecting over the 10-year period? The way you can calculate that is, since YTM is 7% and this is quoted as a bond equivalent yield, for a 6-month period, the yield is 7%. So you have 7% over 20 periods. That means that over the 20 periods, which is 10 years, you hope to make 89.41 multiplied by 1.07, that's the 7%, raised to the power of 20. That 20 is coming from here. So this will give you 346 approximately. So this is saying that over the 20 years, the amount of money that you make is 346 if you make this investment with a YTM of 14%. So how much of this money will come from reinvestment income? The way you can think of this is this 346, as you saw earlier, there are going to be three sources uh, through which you will make this money. Number one is the total coupon payments that you will get. You are going to have, uh, let's see, 20 coupon payments where each coupon payment is going to be 6%. Remember, 12% is for the year. That means 6% or uh, uh, 6 rupees per 100 is for every 6 month period. So 6 per coupon into over 10 years, we'll have 20 coupons. So that is equal to 120. Then you will also get the $100 par value back at the end. And then the final amount is, the, is what we call the reinvestment income. So this reinvestment income is simply equal to 346 minus the sum of these two, which is, uh, which is 220. So we will have 346 minus 220, which is equal to 126. So the reinvestment income needs to be 146 in order for you to make the YTM of 14%. Now let's talk about factors that affect reinvestment risk. Again, as a quick refresher, reinvestment risk means that the coupon payments that you get, let's say you are getting coupon payments of $6 every, every six months. So this obviously is being reinvested at the current rate of interest. If interest rates go down, that means that the return that you are getting from your coupon is not going to be very high. In the previous example, we were getting coupon payments over a 20 period, over 26 month periods. And the idea being that there, we were essentially assuming that every coupon payment was being reinvested at 14%. So the risk is if interest rates go down to say 10%, then the then the coupon amount is being invested at a lower rate and hence your actual yield to maturity will end up being less than the YTM of 14%. So what is it that increases reinvestment risk? Obviously bonds with high coupons, so the higher the coupon payment that you receive, obviously higher the reinvestment risk because high coupon means that you will be reinvesting more money. If you are reinvesting more money, that means that the reinvestment risk is higher. In other words, the negative impact of a decrease in interest rates will be more. 
secondly if we have longer maturities that also results in higher reinvestment risk so if you if you look at this situation where we have 20 periods clearly the reinvestment risk here is more relative to another bond where you just have say six periods since in this bond b we will have fewer number of coupon payments that are being reinvested hence the reinvestment risk is lower now let's talk about some uh, about a commonly uh, about a area that is a common source of confusion which is how to convert a annual pay ytm to semi annual pay and then on the next slide we will go the other way around so let's say that there is a bond which is an annual pay bond and on that annual pay bond you are getting 10 percent what is the equivalent semi-annual pay YTM and when we talk about the semi-annual pay YTM that's actually the bond equivalent yield so if you get 10 percent on a annual pay YTM so that is saying that essentially one dollar will become 1.1 dollar over a year so what is the effective six month rate to get the effective six month rate you say 1.1 to the power of 0 0.5 which gives you the effective rate for a six month period so let's do that 1.1 raised to the power of 1 raised to the power of 0 0.5 which is half a year or six months this is equal to 1.0488 which means that your effective yield for a six month period is 4.88 percent now if you remember from before to convert this into a bond equivalent yield you simply multiply that by 2 and you will get 9.76 so what we are saying is a uh, annual pay bond that gives you 10 percent is equivalent to a semi-annual bond that has a bond equivalent yield of 9.76 percent in other words if you have an annual pay that gives you 10 percent and a semi-annual that gives you a bond equivalent yield of 9.9 percent .9 then this semi-annual uh, this bond which makes semi-annual payments with a BEY of 9% this is better than an uh, annual pay bond which gives you a yield of 10% now take the other scenario what if you have a semi annual pay YTM where the bond equivalent yield is 10% what is the annual pay equivalent the way you can see this is bond equivalent yield of 10 percent means that for a six month period you are getting five percent so effectively how much are you getting in a year so you are getting 1.05 squared because there are two six month periods in a year 1.05 squared is 1.1025 so effectively this means that you are getting 10.25 percent so so this is fairly straightforward uh, a bond which is giving a bond equivalent yield of 10 percent means that over the year you are effectively getting 10.25 percent and the logic is fairly straightforward because let's say that if you invest 100 at the start of the year at the six month mark you are going to get five dollars and that five dollars will again be invested so overall at the end of the year you will end up with 110.25 so this yield is more than more than 110 because of the five dollars in the middle that is being reinvested 